Welcome to part 9 of the Springboard Angular Full Stack Project Series where we are going to build a video streaming application like YouTube. So in part 8, we have developed the functionality to upload the thumbnail to uh, AWS S3 through our Angular application. So in this part, we are going to complete the save video details functionality. So first of all, we are going to display the video player. So whatever video the user has uploaded to AWS S3, we are going to display it inside the inside this section of the save video details. So without any further delay, let's start the video. All right, so to be able to display the video player and uh, the video inside this add video metadata page, first we need to um, create a component for the video player. If you remember in the previous parts, we have already installed the required dependencies to, in our project to display the video player. So now let's go ahead and create the necessary components to display the player, right? So I'm going to open IntelliJ and uh, open the terminal and make sure you are inside the relevant folders. So I'm going to CD into front end, YouTube clone UI. And in here, I'm going to create a new component called as video player. So for that, I'm going to type in NGGC video player, right? NGGC stands for NG generate component video player. So if I press enter, the Angular CLI will create four files. So if I open the front end project, go to source app. Now you should be able to see the video player folder and all four files which we have just created. Let me quickly add this to my local Git repository, all these files. All right. So now what we have to do is to paste in the relevant code, HTML code for the video player inside this video player component.html file. We can find that by referring the documentation of the ngx video killer library. So I'm going to search for ngx video killer and uh, I'm going to open the npmjs page, but I'm just going to scroll down until I find the documentation. And if I click on the using the API section, here you can see the complete HTML of how we can uh, display a video inside our browser. So I'm just going to copy everything and and paste it inside the video player component dot HTML file. So here you can see that in the on player ready directive, it's complaining that we don't have the on player ready method. Um, we don't need as of now. So I'm just going to remove it. If needed, we can add it later. So let's open the video player component.ts file. And uh, in here you can see if we want to use this component in other places, we can use the selector app video player, right? So I'm just going to copy this and go to the save video details component and inside the second div which contains video player. So I'm just going to type in app video player and let's see what it says in our application. We are getting an error inside the VG media directive because Angular is not able to identify the binding expression, the type of this binding expression from inside the media during the AOT compilation phase. So for that to remedy this error, what we can do is we can add in the method call any so that the compiler will not be so strict and it will treat us as any, any other type. Right. So once we enclose this media variable inside the any method, um, the error should now be gone. Like uh, the code should be com su compiled successfully. So if I open the browser again, you can see that we are able to display the um, the video player here. And if I just try to play the video, which is defined inside the video clear documentation, right? So it looks like this is working. So what we really need is we need to really display the video which the user has uploaded in the previous step, right? In the upload video phase, whatever video the user has uploaded, we have to display it inside this, um, inside the video player. So for that, we need to first get the video details like the video URL from the backend. Um, so if you remember, we have just created three endpoints in our backend application. One is to create the video, one is to up, one is to upload the video and the other one is to upload the thumbnail and the other one is to edit the video metadata, right? So we have to create what, uh, yet another endpoint here inside our controller to get the video details. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to name this method as get 
video details so uh, it's going to return a video DTO right and uh, it's going to take in the video ID as a path variable so path variable is going to be a video ID let's annotate this method with the get mapping annotation followed by the video ID path variable right and the response status is going to be HTTP status okay all right so now we have to define also this get video details method inside the video service so let's go ahead and do also that video service dot get video details and let's pass in the video ID of course this get video details method is still um, not existing inside the video service so I'm just going to go ahead and create this get video details method oh so you know what we have actually we actually have this get video by id um, method already so we can just reuse this get video by id this get video details method and uh, this method should not return void but it should return a video so i'm just going to call v to get video by id and pass in the video id and now we will receive the video uh, saved video so the video details which are saved in the database now what we have to do is we have to map this video to the video DTO. Okay, so I'm just going to create video DTO, an object for video DTO. Video DTO. And I'm going to add the video URL, right? Save video dot get video URL and video DTO dot set thumbnail URL. Save video dot get thumbnail URL. All right, so I have manually mapped all the required fields inside the video DTO, right? Uh, the ID, title, description, tags, video status, video URL, and the thumbnail URL. So now we have implemented the get video details method. So let's go back to the controller and uh, just we are going to add the written variable written statement inside our controller. And to be able to access this endpoint, we have to first reload uh, restart our server i'm just going to quickly restart the server and let's test this newly created endpoint in postman i'm just so i'm going to open the postman http client and i'm going to make a get call to localhost 8080 slash api slash videos and i'm going to pass in the video id like the specific video id i want to uh, i want to get so i'm just going to click on send and here you can see in the response we have got all the video details which are available as of now so we only have the id video url and the thumbnail url so these are the only details we have so this response looks good so now we can go ahead and implement this get video details call http call inside our angular application so let's do this next all right so now let me open the save video details component.ts file and in here you can see inside the constructor we are already using the video service now what we have to do here is we have to call spring boot backend and make a rest call for the get video details api right so if you remember from our angular application we are going to make http calls always from a service class in this case if you want to get the video details we want to do it from the video service right so i'm going to open the video service class and uh, just scroll all the way down and i'm going to add a new method here call as get video right and uh, this method is going to take in a parameter called as video id which is of type string and in here we are going to call make a http call http get call to our backend for that we already have the http client injected into our video service class through the constructor so i'm just going to use the http client variable so i'm going to type in this dot http client dot get and to this method call we have to pass in the url of the api so i'm just going to type in http local host 8080 slash api videos and i'm going to pass in the video id so i'm just going to append this video id to the string and this method and this rest api call is going to return a response of type video dto right we are going to get the response 
uh, object in the form of a video DTO. So we have to define also the same structure inside our Angular application, right? So for that, what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file inside the app folder on the root level. I'm going to create a new file called as video video dot ts so this is going to represent the response which is coming from the spring backend so which is coming from our backend right so i'm going to define this um, object as an interface called as video dto so you may have a doubt why we have to define this as an interface instead of a class right by default if we are reading if you are making a http call and we are receiving some response angular suggests to represent that response as an interface so that you don't need to define some default values for that response right so if i open the video controller and go into the video dto so let's see what we have what all fields we have we have id title description uh, tags video url status and thumbnail url so i'm just going to copy everything and just to make my life easier i'm just going to type it here uh, of course this will be uh, this will throw an error but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to i'm going to delete all the java syntax and i'm going to define it in the typescript syntax right so we have defined this uh, fields id title description as string and uh, we have defined the tags as uh, an array of string and the video url video status and the thumbnail also we have defined it uh, simply as a string so what happens if i define it as a class if i define it as a class you can see that we have some errors because angular expects all the fields inside the class to have a default value it expects all the fields inside the class to be initialized to some default value right as we don't want to initialize it to some default value we can we can just define this structure as an interface so now i can define the return type of this get call as a video dto right i can now angular understands while making the http get call that the return type will be of type video dto and i'm just going to add the return statement also here so and uh, this will be returning an observable of video dto so now the get video method is implemented and uh, let's call this get video method from the save video details component.ts file so i'm inside the constructor once we retrieve the video id from the url parameters i'm just going to call make a call to the video service this dot video service dot get video and I'm going to pass in the video ID. And as it's returning an observable, we have to subscribe to that observable. And then we will get the access to the response, which we are getting from the backend, right? And in here, now we will have all the information we required, like the video URL, thumbnail URL, ID, title, whatever we need. So what we need now is a video URL, right? So we will fetch the video URL from the response, and then we'll have to pass this video URL to the video player component so let's define a variable called as video url here of type string and uh, i'm going to assign this video url variable to the video url coming in as a response from the http call and now let me open the html file and uh, what we have to do is if i open the video player component and go to the html you can see that under the video tag we have another tag called as source and in that for the src attribute we have to pass in the url of the video so by default some video from the video dealer website is hard coded here so what we need to do is we have to pass in the video url which is coming in as a response inside the video player component.ts file i can define an input attribute so we can pass in the video url as input to the video player component from the save video details component so something like this right so video url equals video url so this video url we can define uh, it as a property inside the app video player I'm going to first decorate, add the input decorator here and define the video URL as a string. Let's add the import statement and by default we'll make this string as empty. 
right and i'm going to refer bind this video url property to the source attribute here inside the source stack so i'm just going to add the video url property here so if you open the save video details component.html file there is no error everything looks fine so if i open the browser now so you can see that our video is not loading properly this is maybe due to an error so i'm just going to pull up the the net the developer tools and under the network tab you can see that while loading the video from amazon s3 you are getting a course error right this is has not this has nothing to do with our spring boot backend or also with aws s3 in this case I think this is because of the because of a video player settings uh, in a video player by default the cross origin settings the course settings are activated so if i open our so if i open intellij you can see that in the video player component html file under the video tag we have one attribute called as cross origin uh, so due to this our angular application is making a course request first to amazon s3 so now as i remove this attribute once i reload the browser you can see that the call went through successfully and i'm able to and i'm able to play the video also successfully in the browser right so this is good